With Faded Clash just around the corner, it's time to take a look at all the new ride lines that came out of this set. In this video, I'll be going over the new Stoicaea ride line, which is Valeno. Valeno is an archetype built on playing multiple Blitz Orders a turn and having insane defensive capabilities. It trades power for survivability and will generally keep having a board presence. For a ride line, I'll grade one Lascaria. Whenever it's ridden upon, you can search your deck for any Blitz Order and add it to hand. I think a grade two Lascaria, whenever it's rode upon, can check top five and add a Valeno or Blitz Order from among them into your hand. So both of these ride lines will replace the discard cost that you'll have. The first one will directly tutor for a blitz order and then the second one can find a unit or a blitz order off the top five depending on what you're missing as well. Our main grade three is Sword Princess of Dreamblade Valeno Lascaria. So during your turn if you have three or more Valeno units then all of your Valeno units get plus 5k power. If there are five or more then Lascaria gains plus one crit as well. Its second effect is where the magic happens though. When you successfully guard an attack using a blitz order then at the end of that battle you get to draw a card then if you haven't counter charged yet that turn you get to counter charge one so lascaria valeno is a really strong grade three that can help supply the deck with a ton of extra card draw by itself and can give a full board power boost with it now in order to fully talk about this effect we need to talk about our primary blitz order for the deck and it's called everfescent shadow dream blade it can be played for ng blast 2 and it's a 20k shield and it allows you to play another blitz order that turn so this is the primary blitz order in the deck. Having Dreamblade be constantly available is very important for this deck because of the inherent synergy it has with Lascaria. Since we are using more than one blitz order a turn, we can guard multiple attacks throughout a turn and constantly replace those cards to dig deeper into the deck as well. Because of this duo, you can very well get through opponent's turns, taking low damage and having the same amount of cards that you started with. Going over some of the Valeno units you want to play in this deck, there are three different ones from Faded clash. The grade 3 is Valeno Urathus. So at the end of the battle, your Valeno Vanguard attacks. If your opponent's Vanguard is grade 3, then you can Cowblast 1 to restand Urathus. And if you have 3 or more Valeno units in play, it gets an additional 5k power as well. So this is the primary pressure in this deck. With the extra power boost and the consistent counter charge from Lascaria, this card works perfectly with it by it being an 8 18k base, and then it can swing again for 23k. One of the main ways to push with this card is to have 2 of them in your front row on a Persona Ride turn. The numbers will be pretty good and you get five attacks with it. A grade two is Melial. When placed outside of battle phase, if your Vanguard is grade three or greater, you can discard a card and revive a different named Valeno unit from your drop zone, or you can add a Blitz Order from your drop zone to your hand. So Melial is a tutor for the other Valeno units that could be played. Having instant access to a multi-attacker again is really important. It can also replace dead cards in hand to a Blitz Order to have better guardian capabilities on the next turn. And then the last Valeno unit is Valeno Femigila Fiore. If you have a Lascaria Vanguard, it gains plus 2k power during your turn. Also when placed, it can counterblast one and check the top five and add a Valeno or a Blitz Order to your hand. So this card is the biggest consistency booster of this deck. Having the ability to tutor for whatever rearguard, Persona Ride, or Blitz Order we need is big on keeping this engine running. It also becomes a 15k body while having the boost from Lascaria, giving the deck a decent booster to go along with the grade three front row that it'll typically have. And then the last card I want to go over is Overcoming the Unnatural Deck. It is a grade 1 normal order that can be played for Counterblast 1, and whenever it is, it binds itself, and you get to add two orders back from drop to your hand. Overcoming the Unnatural Death is very strong in here because it easily recycles the Blitz order of the deck, which will allow the deck to tank and dig deeper into the deck. For a Regalus piece, this deck could honestly play with any Regalus piece. Retire's Gradle giving more Persona Rides helps this deck keep its power up. If you can find a secondary grade 3 you would like to play, then Forbidal is another great option. If you play Ghost Chase, then you can also call Lascaria off of Formidal and then use Ghost Chase to bounce it back into your hand. That way it's easier to hit the 5 Valeno threshold and you get access to Persona Ride on the following turn. This deck wants to keep its rearguards in play because of the unit requirement for Lascaria's power boosting and critical gain. Angel Bracing Ladder is also a great option for this deck. It's honestly all personal preference on what regardless piece you want to actually play. Personally, I like Gratias Gradle in here, just having an additional way to get Persona Ride. For the Over Trigger, it is honestly freedom of choice as well. If you are consistently doing the double restand play, then the red over trigger is probably the worst option. But if you find yourself playing with only one restander consistently, then red OT can be pretty good in that spot. Blessed Favor will generally be solid because of the rainbow effect and the double draw, plus the potential heal effects that goes along with it. And then Eno's Follow can still be used over Blessed Favor if you value having the selective draw instead of having a random one from your deck. I would personally play with Blessed Favor, but there isn't really a bad option here.
For your mulligan, your primary card you're looking for is Fiore. Fiore is our entire early game with the stack. On grade two, it's going to be able to be a 10k booster or a beater, depending on the circumstance. And you're going to be able to use that counterblast effect to replace itself as well. So you plus in card economy, and then you'll also be digging deeper into the deck. If you're able to spam Fiore as much as possible, then you can start deck thinning pretty quickly, especially with all the other searchability the deck will have. Our second option depends if we're going first or second. If we're going first, then getting Persona Ride is important. If we're going second, then getting Erophis is more important. Whenever we're going first, Erophis won't be able to use its restand effect on turn 3 because it needs the opponent at grade 3 as well. So having Lascaria and Persona Ride there instead will generally just be better. But whenever you go second, Erophis is a lot more important so you can start dealing damage back to the opponent and catch up in the game. And then the third card is Dream Blade because our ride line will naturally find one other Dream Blade and potentially potentially a second one, depending on the grade 2 Lascaria and what it finds. And then we also have Fiora searching for more, but having one guaranteed early on is pretty important on making sure we keep having them in cycle. Especially if we're going second, then we can use these to guard with turn 2 if needed, and we'll be able to slow down the opponent's grade 3 turn that way. During the early game, this deck doesn't really have that many tools. Only Fiora is at full power to help dig for whatever missing pieces you have, and can be a 10k beater to hit at grade 2 vanguards. This deck tries to maintain its low damage damage count, so then it can have full control of the game pace later on from the sheer defensive power it will have. So typically the early game is mostly just setting up for later in the game and making sure we don't fall too far behind. Whenever this deck hits grade 3, it starts being able to hit a bit harder. If it gets the engine running, then it should start defending easily into most turns. It uses Melial as an extra way to recur blitz orders and units, and we also have Arathis starting to help push for damage against the opponent as well. And then late game, the game plan is generally the same as mid game, it starts tanking the opponent's turns really well and trying to out resource the other deck. It can constantly keep getting Persona Ride, draw through the deck, and reusing already spent resources. There isn't a big explosive turn this deck has like most others, but more so it outlasts the opponent's explosive turns and then beats them afterwards. Some of the strengths of this deck is that it can survive most turns just because being able to add back a bunch of blitz orders and have a bunch of 20k shields we will freely be able to plop down is very powerful. It also has easy to accomplish multi-attack because of a rear guard that just says CB1 restand on it. It has easy recursion for Valeno units and Blitz orders because of Melial and because of overcoming the unnatural death. We'll be able to essentially reuse anything we've used in the past and it also draws a ton of cards. So even if we've missed things, we can draw a bunch through Lascaria effect and we also have quite a few tutoring effects through Fioi and the ride line. So this deck can play a pretty controlled game and be able to give you a lot of freedom in how your game plays. Some of the weaknesses of the deck is that it lacks pressure throughout all stages of the game. The numbers this deck hits isn't that outstanding, even on a Persona Ride turn. The biggest threat we can have is a Counterblast 2 double restand play, but outside of that, we will very rarely have a huge pressure turn with this deck, because part of it is currently we have a lack of Leno named units. A lot of the time, we will actually not even get the extra crit on Lascaria, because we have to build our board in a very weird way in order to do it, unless if we have double Arathis, double Fiore. And Meliol just kind of like fits in weirdly in how competitive our front row spots are currently. So sometimes this deck just doesn't have enough names for the extra crit, which makes the deck's pressure lower than it should be. It can also be quite counterblast intensive. Even with the counter charge that Lascaria gives us, two of our support cards are using counterblast, and then overcoming a natural death also uses counterblast. So it makes it kind of hard to manage through all of it, and figuring out what is most important. A lot of the time how I value it is early game Fiori is the most important thing, mid game overcoming a natural death is the most important thing, and then late game Arathis is the most important. And then the last weakness is that games can take a long time. So if we're in an environment like with Japan or with Springfest currently where if time is called then it's a double loss, then this deck will have a tougher time in those environments because, because the deck is making the game last so long compared to other decks. Be wary of that as well. Lascaria is my personal favorite deck out of the new decks in Faded Clash, and I'm very excited to cook with it. I've already been working on a set 2 list as well, so by the time we get to set 2, I'll probably remake this video and talk about it more there. And the deck feels a lot better there than it does right now, but currently the deck is still like pretty fine, and it's still really fun with where it's at. And yeah, thank you all for watching, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz, and I'll see you guys in the next one.